Welcome to the Weon Podcast. Today, we're uh, diving into some pretty concerning findings about ice sheets and what that means for sea level rise. Yeah, there's a new study out with some, well, stark warnings, really, yeah. about the future of our coastlines. And the core issue seems to be that even if we somehow manage to hold warming where it is now, or even at that 1.5 degree target. Significant ice melt is still um, baked in, essentially. It's already set in motion. So which ice sheets are we primarily talking about? Greenland, Antarctica. Exactly. Those are the big ones. Greenland and the Antarctic ice sheets. And, you know, together they hold this almost unimaginable amount of water, enough to raise global sea levels by, what is it, about 213 feet? 213 feet. That's hard to even picture. It really is. And the study makes it clear, melting is expected to continue even if we limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Which is the target everyone talks about. Right. But the thing is, we're already at about 1.2 degrees Celsius of warming. And even at this current level. Even now, yeah. The research points towards uh, continued rapid ice sheet melting and potentially catastrophic sea level rise down the line. How did they figure this out? What kind of data are we looking at? No, it's a combination of things. They pulled together data from satellites, climate models, um, ice cores, which give us that historical perspective. Right, looking back in time. Yeah, and deep sea sediments too. And even, fascinatingly, they use octopus DNA to understand past conditions. Octopus DNA, how does that work? Well, it helps trace historical connections and separations between populations, which can indicate past sea levels and ice sheet extent. It's quite innovative. Okay, so we're at 1.2 degrees now. You mentioned projections. What are they saying? Well, the projections unfortunately suggest we could hit uh, maybe 2.9 degrees Celsius by the end of the century if emissions continue on their current path. Nearly three degrees. And we're already seeing accelerated melt at 1.2. We are. The rate of ice melt has actually quadrupled since the 1990s. Quadrupled. Yeah. Yeah. It's around 370 billion tons lost each year now, on average. That's an enormous number. It is. And it directly impacts sea level. The rate of sea level rise itself has doubled in just the last 30 years. So one of the glaciologists involved said something about 1.5 degrees not being enough to slow things down. That's right. They basically said slowing sea level rise isn't going to happen at 1.5 degrees. In fact, um, acceleration is actually likely. Wow. So even a little bit of this melt can really reshape things. Absolutely. Even what might sound like a small amount of sea level rise could drastically change coastlines. We're talking about potentially displacing hundreds of millions of people. And this isn't some far off future thing, right? We're seeing significant loss now. Oh, definitely. The world is already observing this. <laughs> One researcher even mentioned sort of grimly that they don't have much hope based on current observations. What did they say was the best case? Kind of a slow and steady sea level rise, which... Mm -hmm isn't exactly reassuring. No. So the message seems pretty clear then. Cuts to fossil fuels. Urgent, sharp cuts. That's what the researchers are emphasizing. It's critical. But they also noted that's a challenge. It is a huge challenge, yeah. Uh, Especially with major economies, like the U.S., for example, still heavily reliant on oil, coal, and gas. And another researcher pointed out that even if we hit 1.5... Yeah, that while limiting warming to 1.5 degrees is absolutely a critical target we should aim for, it's not a magic bullet. It won't stop sea level rise on its own, and it won't stop the ice sheets from melting further. It certainly paints a, a well, a sobering picture of what might be ahead. It does. Understanding the speed, the scale of this melt, it's just crucial now as we think about the long-term impacts. Absolutely. It really frames the challenge for the coming decades. Definitely underscores the urgency, both for cutting emissions and, well, for adapting to the changes that are likely already locked in. Important points to consider. Thank you. Stay tuned for more such intriguing stories to come.